Hello, hello. Anybody out there? Hello, I see somebody, somebody's on here. Say hello. Hello, I got two people joining me today. We're about to get started. I just want to make sure I can see the comments. So if you don't mind just saying hello when you come on, that would be great. Oh no. Okie dokie, Smokey. Ah, I see everyone. Boom, got it, booyah. Okay, so I haven't started anything yet and I seriously, oh, from your phone, not your iPad. That makes sense, hi Allison. Oh wow, people are jumping on now. So we're, we're going to do a background for this girl after we color this sweet baby dragon right here. Hi, Cheryl. But, um, hi, Cam. But I have no idea what I'm doing with this background. We're just going to uh, wing it. Hey, Donna. I thought about a few different um, ideas, but no, um, concrete anything just yet. So, hello, Jennifer. Look at that. Everybody's jumping on. So let's go ahead and get started. And what I need to decide first, I'm going to zoom in just a little bit, is what color I want to do this baby dragon that's going to be flying in to the scene with this girl. So I haven't decided just exactly what yet, but um, we'll do her in a little bit. Let's do this baby dragon first. We need to pick some colors. Um, actually, I could show you the colors we have on her. So we have a little bit of purple in her hair right here. So red, really? Hmm. You know, when I when I move my light so I can see what's going on on the live, I can't see my Copic box very well. <laughs> that is not a good thing, but hey, one can always just, you know, figure it out. All right, so, okay, so red, we're going to go with red. Red was the first thing said, red, red said, and we're going to go with that. So I'm going to use our favorite red of ours mixed together, you and I, Jamie, and I'm going to play around with the colors a little bit tonight because, hey, you know I don't like using the same thing all the time. Green, we're going to have a lot of green in the background, so let's do, let's do the red. So let me get a little swatch out here because I'm going to change up these red colors from what we normally do. So let's try this new combination of red. So this is our 89. We'll see how this goes. Hi, Susan. Um, our 29 will be this one, which we know go good together. Then our 37. Well, that's pretty good, getting us a little bit lighter. Our 46, because you know that's my favorite. And then 
Let's try 35 and 42 and see what we think. Hi, Nicole. Oh, nice. I like the 35. And that's the 43. I like those. So let's pick one, two, three. Let's take that one out. That's the R37. Not, I like them better like this. So let's try this. Okay, so here we go. I think we're gonna do, hi Nikki, R89. This is how we, in case you're just jumping on now, this is how we test out the color combo that we're gonna use. Um, R29, R46, liking that. Hi Jen. This one's R35, and then R43. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I like that. So let me go ahead and put that in my marker stand because we are for sure gonna use that. 89, 29, hi Tina Marie, hi mom. Linda's watching, R46, R35, and R43. That's gonna be our red combo. Now we do have to do the inside, the inside part right here. And I always do that in my um, E colors. So I think I'm gonna try to switch it up a little bit. So maybe it'll have a little bit of a purple and peach tint to it. So these colors are R85. RV34 and RV42. And I think I wanna go with those. For that, the inside part of the wings. And then, hello Renska. And then I also need to, I probably wanna add one other color to it, something different than red. So maybe let's add a little bit of the purple to like pull in her hair. Purple and red are pretty good together. Red, violet, purple, you know, those roll pretty good together. So maybe we can use an RV like, let's see, what about RV09? Nope, not that. I have a picture in my head, that wasn't it. <laughs> maybe... This is RV69, and this is RV66. Yeah, a little bit more purpley is what I was going for on that. And then, maybe I'll just use those two. That's good, that's five colors. I think I'm gonna do that. Hi, Tammy. Look at everybody jumping in. Okay, so what I like to do first is I'm going to do the inside of his wings and his tail all the same colors. So let me zoom in for you because this is a little bitty guy so we want to make sure we can see him really well. So you guys, can you guys see him really well? I'm also going to move so hopefully this doesn't make you guys like crazy sick or something but I'm going to move my camera around a little bit so don't freak out yet, to the side, so you can see it a little bit from an angle, so hopefully you'll be able to see me coloring from the side just a little bit better, so even though my background looks like all crooked and stuff. I think that might be able to help, but since I haven't gotten my new stand yet, we gotta do what we gotta do. So I want to do the inside of his wings, I'm gonna take these two other colors off. So I only have the wing colors on here. Okay. Hi, Yvonne. So we're gonna use, oh, I have them backwards. That's gonna be confusing for you guys. Okay, we're gonna use R85 and then RV34 
and then RV42 for the inside of his little wings. So I'm gonna start with this R85, and I want you to be able to see what color I'm on, just in case you stamped your baby dragon and want to do it too. So let's start with this wing over here. I like to put the darkest color just inside here. And then I like to put just a little bit in these tiny corners. So they're a little bit hard to see. They're really small. Hi, Doris. But just a little bit in the corners of these. So you really have to use the tip of your marker so you can get a little bit in there and not too much. Same thing here. And we'll, of course, blend this all out. Pretty colors. Hi, Vet. Hi, Renska. Yay, yay. But this goes really good with my nails. I got my nails done, so you guys didn't have to see my broken nail anymore. That really bothers me when my nails break before I live. I just can't bring myself to do red nails or um, or blue. I just wasn't feeling blue today. So this is for 4th of July. <laughs> That's my sparkly firework. Let's do one side first and then we'll do the other so it blends really well because the paper will still be wet. So RV34 is going to be next. Oh, I just love these baby dragons. So much fun. Okay, so I'm going to blend out from where I put that last color. We only have three colors, so this one will be the true color, so it will cover the whole area here. I'm going to try to keep these little triangular areas circle around it because I don't I don't want them to be prominently triangles. Hi Michelle. And look, Jamie, I'm doing another one that's kind of cut out a little bit. So I don't have a whole lot of paper to work with to put my fingers on to hold it still, but you guys got this. So keeping this area, again, more of a circle, less of a triangle or square, just more with rounded edges. Hi, Angela. Oh, something going on outside. Can you guys hear all that? emergency vehicles going on. I don't know if you can hear that in the video, but it's pretty loud here. Look, already coming together. Super awesome. Okay, now wait till you see this next color. I love using this next color with these. It changes, it changes it to a more peachy color. So it's RV42. I love this. I, this is one of my, I've decided to call my um, my magic, my, my ones that I think do magic. I think I'm going to call them my, um, my superhero markers or my secret weapon markers. So watch how much this one changes, but also blends in. So I'm going to do around the edge of that area. And since this is quite a significantly different color, I'm going to do over the last color I did. And then I'm just going to do this little bit of back and forth right here to really bring in that, that blending of that color. Now, wasn't that neat? It makes it look so cool, I think. And so textured. I really, really like it. So we're going to try that again so you can see first I'm going to go around the area where the white and the color mix and then I'm going to go over the whole thing because this is such a separate um, color from what we had on there before and then back and forth over that area one more time. Can you see that? And it makes it look kind of textured and sort of, I mean, it's just one of those wow magic colors that I like so much 
Okay, going around this area right here again. It's really going to change those colors. That's what I love about it. And this is one of my secret weapons, <laughs> secret weapon markers that I add with other colors to make it just pop the way that I want it to. There we go. Now we have some awesome inside of the wings. Amazing. Hi, Paula. Okay, so if you think that's cool looking, let's do it one more time on this side. So first we're gonna start with R85. And this, I think this is gonna look really good on his little tail too. So I'm gonna start right up in here, in this area here. Kind of extend out. Hopefully you guys can see that while I'm doing it. That's why I moved my camera. Using the tip of the marker, we're gonna do just these tiny areas right here. So we're gonna do this again here and then just in these little cracks so i'm not gonna lie um bat wing skin i know i love it isn't it awesome hi janet so i'm not gonna lie earlier i was watching me some uh murder death kill as jamie and i call it some crime tv channel stuff and i fell asleep so i'm gonna do a little bit right in here so I can represent that that wing is going right behind him. And it's also going to have to go inside his mouth. So we have to use the very tip of the marker and go around his little fangs, his little baby teeth, so that we don't get it on the baby teeth. Just a little bit around here too. If you use the tip of your marker, you can really get that detail in there the way that you want it. Hi, Brianne. So that's color number one. This is only a three color combo because this baby dragon's look pretty small. This is RV34 is the next color. So starting here and blending this out a little bit further and all the way around the outside. Same thing on this one. If we're really delicate, we won't um, go outside the lines. And I need you to find a friend so we can add you to the retreat group, right? Adorable. So these are the baby dragons. There's actually four baby dragons in the set. Are there four? Yes. This is just one of the four. So quick shot, here's the rest. This is the one we're doing now. Then we have this baby dragon, this baby dragon, and this baby dragon. This one's my favorite, I think. I love them all, but that's my favorite. Anyway, they are called baby dragons. We do have them in the shop. We originally released them without dies and then went back and made dies for them. So there's dies and stamps in the shop. They're super duper cute. You can always request that I color baby dragons. I love coloring them. RV42 is the secret weapon color. And we're gonna go along this line where the white and the color meet first just to wet that area and then we're going to go around all of it just to lighten that pink and change the color then back and forth just to blend out that color really well see how that that's why they're a secret weapon see how that magic happens it just all of a sudden it changes it's so awesome Okay, here we go, one more time, around where this one is. Oh no, two more times, because we still have that other area to do. This one was pretty easy, because it was a really small, small spot, so there we go. That part is done. Aw, I'm sorry, Tammy. 
Hi, Tina. Okay. So here we go. Round where we have the little bit of white. This one I have to do very delicately because if I put too much ink in this area, it's going to bleed into his teeth. And I don't want to do that. I want to leave his little teeth not like that. So, Okay, so one more time with these three colors because we're going to put it on his little tail because I think it will look really good matching his tail. Hi, Dawn. So R85, one more time for this little part right here on his tail. So I'm gonna do this part that's underneath the inside part of his tail, the underside, like this. And then I'm gonna do a teeny spot right there. So just like that. Hi, Tiffany. Thank you everyone for hopping on and joining me for a baby dragon and a background. The next color is RV34. And we're gonna blend out from where we put that last color. So most of it down here underneath his tail and the underside is gonna be this darker color before we bring in the secret weapon. Hi, Joanne. Yes, a baby dragon. The set is called Baby Dragons, and there's four dragons in the set. Super cool. They're really, really cute, and they sell really, really fast. So if you're in love with them, you should go grab them before they sell out. So this is our RV42. It's the secret weapon because it changes the color so much and makes it look so pretty. I just love this color. My secret weapons change often. Sometimes it's this color and then I'll find another one to mix in that looks awesome. Oh, really? That's cool. That's super cool. I love dragons too and dinosaurs and frogs. They have a lot of likes, I think. Okay. So that was those three. I need to put those aside so I can make sure I write them down for you when we get. You know what? I think we're going to do, and I don't know if, how well this will work, but RV69, RV66 are the colors that I want to use for his spikes and his belly. And then maybe, let's say, we throw the secret weapon in this one, too, and see how it pans out. Maybe it'll work awesome. Maybe not. Who knows? It's just paper. I have lots of baby dragons stamped, so I can always start over. RV69. This one's actually called Peony. We have a Peony stamp. That's funny. I didn't know that. Okay. So I'm going to start with these little spikes right here. And I'm going to do just the corners at the bottom closest to his head. And I'm going to do that on all of them. Oh, Jack, you did not. Oh, my gosh. He's killing me over here. Oh, by the way, if you didn't know, Jack is my dog. He just walked over here and tooted and then left. And he's killing me. I can't believe he even came out here for that. What will work? What did I miss? The 66 and the 42 will work? All right. Sweet. Thanks for, thanks for having my back, bestie. Okay. So while we're coloring, let's have some chit-chat. I'll still stop briefly to tell you what I'm doing. Um, hi, Michelle. So I don't know if you can see these down here. I'm going to hold this up really close so you can see it. So let's come and focus. Okay, so you see his little baby claws right there? They're so super cute. But at the end, after we do the rest of the coloring on him, we'll come back in with this RV69 and do his little claws with it. But I'm not going to do them now because I don't want to hit them 
touch them with the red and bleed the colors out. So I'm gonna hold off on that. That'll be the last thing that we do. Okay, RV66 is next. And we're gonna go around the outside of the spikes. It doesn't leave us very much, just a teeny tiny spot in the middle for us to throw that magic weapon, that secret weapon in. So we only have three colors. So you have to hold your marker upright and barely touch the paper to get these teeny tiny brush strokes. Otherwise, you'll just blur it all out. And what ha if, if that doesn't work for you, then feel free to just use two colors. That's okay. You can, because it's your baby dragon. Hi, Gail. So RV42 is next. Don't judge me. I know I get these marker caps upside down sometimes. <laughs> but hey, at least you can tell. Oh, thanks. I'm glad you like my nails. I, I really struggled with what color to do my nails today when I went to the nail place. And Jamie and Mom, the nail lady, asked about you. I know she only met you one time the last time I was there, but she said, where's your friend and your mom? I was like, yeah, they couldn't come with me today. But she remembered we all went there the last time. She said, bring your mom back. <laughs> I was like, okay. Okay, so we're just blending out these little spikes just a little bit. We don't want to do too much because then the color will bleed outside of the little spiky lines, and we don't want that. Although there are ways to work around that if it happens, but we're going to hope it doesn't happen. Hi, Barbie. Hey, Gail. I'm so sorry this table is shaking a little bit. I still haven't gotten my new camera hold, so. All right, so now what I wanna do is give him a little bit of this color on his, I'm gonna do his belly in this color. And then we'll do the whole rest of the baby dragon in the red. So he's gonna be a very red, pink, fuchsia purple baby dragon hello hello jack don't come over here again you just go play somewhere else for now oh look at that i missed a little bitty spike right here and since it's hidden back behind his neck i'm gonna go ahead and just do it all in this color so i'm gonna do this color right under his chin and then I'm gonna do in a little bit, around his shoulder, in a little bit. Down here, I'm gonna do a little bit in this corner where his arm is folded over. This is really small areas, but I promise if you hold your marker upright, you can do it too. I'm gonna do this side. Okay, now we have to do this part right here. A lot of this is gonna be pretty dark. If you struggle with putting this color in here because it's a tiny place, then just pick one color or two colors instead of trying to do three in this tiny space until you get, until you get more practice. It's totally fine. I'm gonna do a little bit around his foot right here. I'm just gonna do it once in one solid line right there. Okay, so we have that color in. This is the last time we're gonna use this sequence here. We're gonna switch to the red. So this has just a little bit of red and pink in it. So it's a little bit offset from the red we're gonna make the baby dragon. And the red baby dragon is gonna go with her. I think it'll be cute. 
If not, we can all blame Jamie because she picked the color. <laughs> you like how I just threw you under the bus there, Jamie? Okay, this is RV66. And we're just going to blend out from where we put those colors. I'm going to deepen, leaving a little bit of space in the middle of each one of these scale areas. Just a little bit. Rude. <laughs> I was just kidding. I was just playing. I'm just playing. There we go. Okay, so we left a little bit. Yay! All the kids for the bestie retreat have been mailed. If you're going to jump in and join us for the bestie online retreat, you might want to take care of that soon so you can get your kit before, before it starts. You still have time to join. Otherwise, your kit, your kit might not make it if you don't wait, if you wait too, too much longer. So I'm going to just be doing kind of a back and forth in here to sort of blend this out with our secret weapon. Our secret weapon marker, RV42. And it does, but it's a, it does blend well, but it's still an even a different color than what we got before, which I love. Hi, Reiki. Here we go. A little bit there. Then we're just going to kind of do a little bit of back and forth here to blend from each side. Oh, that's super pretty. I actually like that a lot. That's awesome sauce. Okay, so laying those aside, because now we're done with those, it's time to start with the R colors. So because I have more than one Copic holder, I have the R's set up. Ta-da! So R89, R29, R46, hi Ricky, R35, and R43. Those are the colors we're going to use dark to light. Okay, so here we go. Starting with R89. Trying to keep that in your view and still have you close enough to the baby dragon that we can we can still see him. I'm gonna start at the bottom of the baby dragon this time instead of starting on his face. So he's gonna look pretty funny while we're going through. So we need the darkest shadow areas to be this darkest color. So I'm going to make the tip of his tail right here. Notice it looks like I touched it a bunch right there, but I didn't. I'm just barely touching the paper. So sometimes I have to make that movement a few times because I want to keep that uh, little brush stroke really, really thin. So I have to, you know, keep doing this until I touch the paper. Okay, we're going to do along the bottom of his legs and his little hiney down here and his little foot and his other little foot and then I'm gonna do right here where his hand is where, where his arm is folded up I'm gonna do this line on his foot I'm gonna do a little bit right here there's foot folds. And then I'm going to do over this hip area right here and a lot right here on his, from his belly out because this is all shadowed right here, like quite a bit. And then his arm, I'm going to do right here where the arm folds a little bit. And then right over here with this one hand is covering the other and I do not want to touch his little nails because I'm going to make those RV69. I am going to do the top of his hand right there because it's covered by his face. I'm not going to do his head yet. I'm going to do his whole body before I do his head and I'm not going to do his wings yet either. I'm going to stop right here. And maybe I'm going to do a little bit right here. 
We'll do his wings separate too, so you can see it in sections. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Okay, R29. We don't have to put a lot of each of these colors just because we have five colors in this combo. So just a little bit of each color works really well. So I'm gonna pull out from that original color I put down, extending it a little bit further. Now with red, we have to be really super careful we don't go outside the lines because the colorless blender will push the color back in the lines, but not so well with red. <laughs> You're realizing the shadows would be in a completely wrong spot. Well, maybe your light source is coming from a different direction. That's That should be your story, and you can stick to it. It took me a long time to feel comfortable with where I wanted my shadows to be when I was first coloring. It took a long time. And for a while, I just had light sources coming from all directions until I got used to it. <laughs> okay. I'm going to just not go into that wing yet. I don't really want to do that wing yet. I'm going to get a little bit more on his arm. Because this is a really bright red even though it's dark it's still brighter than the original dark color i put in there so i want to get a little bit of that red in there we're doing good as long as we're not touching those little talons <laughs> just not as smart as i am yet well you'll get there i don't know about being smart i just I'm going to stick to the fact that that's my light source. <laughs> okay, so this is R46. It's the third in the five color combo, so it's going to have more than the other colors. But not too much because he's really tiny. But he is, it is going to be kind of my true color, so there's going to be a little bit more of this one than any of the other colors. I'm blending out from the last color and still leaving white areas. The very last color will be the least amount used. It's just the highlight. So we're just filling in in the same areas that we colored with the last ones, just extending out a little bit further, bringing those colors together. Here we go, starting to get there. I need to do a little bit more down here. There we go, he's starting to look super duper funny. It's from the Baby Dragon set. There are some super cute, funny sentiments on it and four baby dragons. That's the one we're doing. That's the second one, that's the third one, that's the fourth one. Okay, R35. See? So you could stamp it real quick and color with me. <laughs> so 35 is the second to the last color, so I'm just going to leave some very small white areas. The rest of it's going to be finished up with this color. The um, white areas are where I'm going to leave most of the highlight. These colors blend super well. I love these colors. So that when they blend really, really well, it makes life so much easier for the colorists. So super duper easy. You'll have it soon-ish. Yay! I'm 
so glad you guys like these baby dragons so much. They are really close to my heart. Oh no, you don't have this one? How could you not have this one? Was it sold out? <laughs> R43 is the last color. I think I forgot to put the last one in the tail, but that's okay, because the tail is sticking out, so it will be pretty light. I'm just kind of getting that blend going with a little bit of highlight in that tail. Isn't that pretty? Awesome sauce. Okay. I'm just blending out kind of a back and forth motion to leave these highlights in here. You see how pretty that, how well that marker works with that? Here, let me show you up close. See if that'll focus in. See that? Look at that tail, how light that tail is. Super duper awesome. Here we go, blending that out a little bit. Now we're gonna blend this part and this part. And right here, and we're gonna do his little arm right here. And we're gonna touch this little hand one time. Now he looks funny cause his head's not done and his, he looks so shiny. I think it's the light or something. The lighting feels a little off today. He does look very bright, doesn't he? And I do kind of like that purpley pink with his red. I do like him red. He's very cute, red. Okay, so starting over again with R89. I'm gonna do his wings. I'm gonna start with this part right here. And then I'm gonna do the underside of the wing. I'm gonna do these areas up here. Just to give us some really dark in between. I know it looks funny, just bear with me. I'm also gonna do, and this I really have to hold my marker up right. This one I'm gonna do a little bit from each one of these parts in between his wings. Woohoo! Yay, Janet! Okay, and then I'm gonna come over here on this one. I'm gonna get really close to his eye. So I, I have to hold my breath. Just kidding. Because if I color in his eye, I'll never recover from that. I'll have to start all over again. Just kidding. You know, I could always find a way to fix it. And the little ends right here and right there. Okay, so we're gonna do the wings separate from the head. Hi, Debbie. Um, it feels like maybe I should zoom out just a tad bit because it seems like, for me, it looks like it keeps going out of focus, but you guys can tell me what you think about that. Okay, so next we have R29. My R29 is getting dirty already. I'm about to clean it again after this. I'm going just along this area where I had the other dark color. A little bit up from here. If I can get it to touch the paper. I'm going to try to get a little thin line there. A little bit out from here, up from here, down from here, up from here. They look really dark right now, but they're not going to look like that when we get done. Because these other colors are going to get lighter as we go along. So a little over that. Down from here, down from here, up, up, and up. I'm also gonna try to do that same really thin line right there. 
it's super hard to do because it's such a tiny spot. So if you can't do it, don't worry about it. We'll move on and it will all come together anyway. Our 46 is next. Oh, thanks, Debbie. I love them too. Um, R46, we're going to extend out and do a little bit more with R46. So this one, we're going to have to hold our marker really upright because I want to do that line along here. Because that's a really tiny area. I went slightly outside the line. So you know what we do, we fix it. Can't even tell. It does look like one of my red markers is a little bit sticky, so um, I don't want to put too much of that in there, but I'll show you how I'll fix that sticky in a few minutes. It's probably R89. It happens sometimes. Anybody else have that problem? Their marker gets a little sticky. It usually means there's some kind of clog or some kind of something. Yes, there are videos. I have done two videos on how to clean your markers in the group. Copic marker maintenance is what I call it. Hi, Chrissy. Marker maintenance is what I call it. So if you want to search in the group, search marker maintenance, and then you can probably find the marker maintenance video. Okay, so this is my second to the last color, so I'm just gonna leave very tiny area of, of white left for that last color. I mean, really tiny, just little bitty tiny areas. Not on this one though. I'm gonna fill that one in because it's close to his head and I don't, I think it would be darker than the other ones. There we go little bit of areas you're welcome oh we also have it on our youtube so there you go i wasn't sure if i saved them out there or not but i guess i did um r43 is the last color in the combination so we're gonna go a little bit back and forth to fill that in blend out that color and we're gonna do it here and then I'm gonna do it here. And then we're gonna come over here and do it on this one. And then we're gonna do it here. And that's gonna bring our wings together. So I can't show you how to take the shiny off until I'm completely done with the dragon, but you can see if I hold it up that there's just a, do you see that little bit of shine? It's that darkest marker. It's really, it's a little bit on the sticky side. So I'm gonna show you what I do to that to help with that. Oh, Tammy, I'm so glad you like the baby dragons too. Me too. Okay, so we're gonna be a little bit careful with R89 because I think that's my sticky one. Yep, it is. So sometimes when it's, a little bit sticky. I'll just color a whole lot on a piece of paper to kind of get that ink flowing again since I can't clean it right at the moment. And then that sometimes will help a little bit. But you can tell by looking at the marker. See how it, it looks kind of goopy? I probably need a new nib. Uh-huh. Yep. It's not so dark. Okay, here we go. So we're going to do the underside of his ear and I'm going to do a little bit down this back side of his neck and then I'm going to do a little bit right here up close to the top of his head and then I'm going to do a little bit on this ear the back side of his ear and then I'm going to do down here and right here. I am going 
gonna do a little bit on this side too, but we're gonna leave a little bit of this ear open because we're gonna put some of the Magic R42 in there so that um, it looks like the inside of his ear. So for this one, I don't like to put too, too much of this very dark color, but I am gonna touch this little piece of fold right here that shows his, um, where his nose bends. And then I'm gonna go around where the nails are right here just to give us a little bit of a guard against those little claws. Okay, R29 is next. I will definitely be cleaning these, mar these markers before they go back in my marker case. Okay, so I'm gonna start on his ear again I start coming around. I'll do this little spot too right here. And then I'm gonna start working out from this back side with these little tiny brush strokes. I'm gonna come along and touch where his little edge of his mouth is. And I'm gonna do up underneath where his tongue is. So give him just a little bit on his mouth. He looks funny when you first start coloring him. I am gonna do a little bit here, but not too much. And then we have to do some from the top of his head. Blend out that red. Haha, -ha, that rhymed. It makes me, the rhyme makes me think of the the wonky donkey. Has anybody heard of that? The wonky donkey book. I read it to my grandson all the time. Hi, Tanya. Baby dragons. Oh, slippery little suckers. The markers jump out of my hands a lot. If you watch me, you'll see they jump out of my hands all the time. Markers or lids or something. This one is R46. It's the middle one in our combo, so it's more the true color. So I will use more of it. I'm going to do a very tiny, tiny line where the bottom of his, his little mouth is. And I'm gonna do this line right here that's closest to this eye, but do not get the red in his eye. Cause if you get the red in his eye, it'll never come out. I'm gonna do underneath this eye right there. Then he'll have to have red eyes too. But hey, baby dragons can have red eyes. Okay, so now we're gonna fill in a little bit more of this. And a little bit more here. And I think I'm gonna do above this eye right here too. Because I do, I do, I do. Does that look blurry? Jamie, is that image blurry on the screen? Am I zoomed in too far? Does it look okay? It's hard for me to tell. Maybe my glasses are foggy. <laughs> you never know. R35 is next. And then we have one more color after this. So this is gonna fill in a lot of it. We're gonna leave just a little space for the last color, except for right here in this ear. We're gonna leave that one a little bit more because we wanna leave some room for our magic color. Okay, so I'm gonna do all the way underneath his chin with this one. I'm not gonna really leave any highlight because that's under his head. I'm gonna go right to his little eyebrows Gonna go over his eyelid right here. We do that very slow. Gonna do it all the way around now. We do it slow so we don't get it in his eyes. So we'll color his eyes in a little bit. Then along his nose right here. And then up from this area right here. Don't get happy and do it too fast or you'll go in his eye and you don't wanna do that. So 
Be very careful. Oh, is that why it looks like that? Um, I'm gonna try not to, maybe let's move this. Let's move this over here. And then that way my arm won't be going underneath the camera so much. And maybe that'll help. R43. Here we go. Okay, so we're still gonna leave a little bit of this. We're just gonna go over the top part right there. We're gonna fill in this ear because this is really just the outside of this ear. I'm gonna come down here and just touch his cheeks with this color. This color is gonna lighten it up a little bit, so I'll make sure I get, I'm gonna come down from the forehead and then we're gonna come up from the nose. This is gonna lighten him up just a little bit. But we wanna make sure it still blends really well from one section to the other. Hi, Rosie. And then this part right here, by his nose. Now, I'm going to make, I, I need to decide if I'm gonna make, leave that white or make it the eyelid, but I think I'm gonna wait till I color the eyes and make the decision from there. So let's pull in our RV42, just to do this little area up here to fill in that shows the inside of his ear. So this one will bring in that color kind of from his from his wings just a little bit. And then we also need to do his tongue. But I want his tongue to be lighter. So I think I'm going to use well maybe let's just use this color too. RV42. Let's use RV42 for his tongue. There we go. Perfect. That was a good choice. Now, I told you we were going to come back in with the RV69, and we're going to do his claws. And this, I'm going to move these markers. We're just going to look at RV69. Oh, you love it. Yay! And we're going to color, we're going to color in these little claws. So it's very, very careful, very, very tiny little dots. Touch it. I think it is my glasses are blurry. I probably need to clean them. So then we're going to do this one, this one, and this one. You won't be able to see them oh so well when you're looking at it, but you can kind of see the white spots um, left uncolored. So get them colored in. I missed the little spot right there and right there okay so now his little tiny claws are colored and let's pull him up close so you guys can see him see how cute he is so cute I think he needs a little bit more of this RV 42 right here on his belly it looks like I missed that spot when I was blending it out. When I held it up close to the camera. Yeah, there we go. Better. Okay, so now we got to do his eyes and then we got to cut him out. He's super cute though. I like him a lot. I think he's going to look really good with the girl. So, super cute. Yay! Okay, so what color eyes should we give him? I was thinking, haha, ha, eyes, I, I was thinking that we'd go back to these colors. Hi, Marianne. I thought we'd go back to these colors, this, uh, like BG 78, 75, 72, and then my, this is another one of my, my magic colors that we used on her pants and make that his eyes so it'll pull in with the the uh, the rest of the image. 
<laughs> so funny. Okay, so I just have three colors. I have BG78, which I'm going to do his eyes. But be before I do that, no, I'll do this part first. Yes, blue. BG78. So I'm going to start in this little area right here in the corner of his eye. And I'm going to put a little bit on this one too. Won't be that much. And then I'm going to go around the little, the little pupil here, which I'm going to color in as black and then put that white accent on it. Or maybe I'm going to color it in blue if I touch it the wrong way. And then I'm going to do the outside of the eye just for a barrier. There we go. Gonna do the same thing with this one. And then I'm gonna do a couple little lines out. And this is gonna look a little funny when I first start, but I promise it'll be okay. So he's gonna look a little bit funny right now, but we'll get there. Those of you who have watched my lives before, you you know where I'm going with this. Okay, so BG75. This one, I'm going to go a little bit up on that corner of his eye and a little bit around the outside. And then I'm just going to do these little lines just like I did going this way. But I'm, this time I'm going to go the opposite way. They're pretty little eyes, so they're not really going to show a whole lot, but they are going to look super cute when we get done, I hope. If not, it's only paper. We can do it again. BG72, and this one is the one that I'm going to blend those two colors that I just used together. I just went over that white spot. We'll just make it black when we get done. So we got to draw his pupil back in and do his little white dot. So not too bad, but wait, 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 wait. Now we're gonna use G00. And what I'm gonna do is like a little half moon shape. I'm just gonna keep doing it back and forth. Very, very lightly. Back and forth with this G00, a little bit at the top, but mostly just back and forth right here. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, but I have to be careful because this side is really, really, really tiny. I'm going to do it again just to make sure this comes out really good the way I want it to. Ah, there we go. Starting to do it now. Took it a little while to really get going. Doesn't usually happen that way, but maybe I should have used G000 instead of 00. But do you see how much that lightened up his eyes? I love this color. This is my superpower color from eyes. See how cute those look? You're exhausted from not sleeping. You really got to do something about that. I need to smooth this out a little bit. So I'm just going to touch it one more time with this marker, but not where I put that really light color. I think I'm going to leave those as the whites of his eyes. I kind of like them that way. Okay, now we have that sticky problem still a little bit on here where it make, made it shiny. So I just take this eraser that I have. Good night, Jamie. I take this eraser that I don't use for pencil erasing. I just use it with my Copics. It's just a click eraser, nothing special. But I make sure that it's completely white. There's no pencil or any other, any other anything on it. And then I just lightly touch after this is dried. I'll just lightly erase the sticky area. This won't work if you're if it's real sticky, but it will work if it just has a if it's just starting to get sticky, but it's not real sticky yet. And you just run it over top of there. It won't smear it as long as you let it dry before you 
before you did it. I can do it by his mouth, but I don't want to touch his eyes yet. But I can do it around his head. These parts just, and it just takes off that glare, sticky glare that you can see for real when you're looking at it. So look at how much better that looks. See, it doesn't have that. It just has the glitter look from the pen, but not that shiny, shiny look that we had before. It really helps a lot. Okay, so now we have to finish his eyes. If you look really close, you can see where the whites of his eye was right there. We're gonna do that with a white gel pen, but not yet. We need to let it dry. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take my, hi Tony, take my O3 multi-liner and I'm just gonna color in where I want that little pupil to be on his eye on both sides just to get that pupil in there really good. And then we'll do the white gel pen after we give that a chance to dry. So while the eyes are drying, I'm just gonna cut it out real quick, real quick, like fussy cut it out real quick, real quick. I'll back it up so it doesn't blur up so much. Um, I do have dyes to cut this out, but it would take just as long to go over there and set up the die and cut it on my die machine as it would for me to just fussy cut it out. I do a lot of fussy cutting, so I can fussy cut pretty good, pretty fast. So you won't have to wait too long, but bear with me, don't go away, because we're gonna do a background next. I don't know what it's gonna look like or what the plan is with it, but we're gonna do it. I was thinking we would do like a, maybe a stone wall background and a grassy area that she'll be sitting in and maybe some faint tall trees over the stone wall. I don't know, something like that was kind of what I was thinking. Hi, Melinda. So I think we're about to do a really cool background, but I promise if it doesn't come out well, I'll just cut my girl out and try again on a different background and then stick her on the background. So I'm not afraid to try. We'll see how it goes. Here we go. We're halfway around the dragon. So it won't take too much longer. I've cut these baby dragons out a ton of times. I probably need a little bit sharper scissors. These scissors don't seem to be working quite as well as they used to. If I have a whole bunch of these, I just use my scan and cut, but. Fussy cutting like a pro, thanks. I do like, I do not mind fussy cutting. I don't like those little pieces hanging off. It makes it harder to fussy cut. So if you're trying to fussy cut something, don't leave those wings hanging out. I'm even gonna cut in between here because we don't leave to leave, we like we don't like to leave big white spots stuck when we're fussy cutting. So little white spots okay, big white spots not cut out not okay. Boom, almost done. Just one more wing to go. I do move the paper and not. Um, not my hands so much. I like to move the paper around it. It's easier for me that way. I'm gonna actually go through here because I really need to get this white part cut out as well. Go around these little spikes. I am gonna go around the last one even though it looks like it's not a very big space because I don't like those white spots left in there. Neither does Jamie. So she kind of laughs at me if I miss one. Because that's what besties can do. They can laugh at each other because it's no, you can both laugh together. That's what makes it life fun. Okay, 
tail's the last part and then we're done. I'm not going to cut out the girl so you don't have to watch me do that. We're just going to do the background right on top of there. So now we have our baby dragon cut out. That wasn't too painful. I'm going to throw away the scraps so they're not in my way. And then I'll show you. Okay, we got to zoom out because we got a bigger paper to color on now. Okay, so this little baby dragon, he, we might even put him on a wobble, but he's going to be flying right into her hand. We'll either put him in her hand like that, like all the way in her hand, or we'll put him up here flying into her hand. I haven't decided yet. Depends on how the background looks. But look, isn't that cute? That was my what I envisioned last night when I was originally doing this. So I think what we'll do is like, well, we'll just get started. <laughs> and I'll just tell you as I go what I decided. So I didn't want to do just like what we normally, like I didn't want to just do grass and then she's sitting there. I just, I wanted to do something different. So I think what we're going to do is I'm going to use W00 because it's really, really, really light. And I'm going to draw me out like a stone wall for the background. Excuse me. Um, and then, yeah, something like that. So I'm going to draw me out a stone wall real quick. I'm going to use my ruler really quickly so that I get at least get a straight line. So I want to put it like he flew over the wall to get to her. So I'm lining up my image with the squares on my, let's see, on my Tim Holtz mat. And then I'm going to line up this ruler right about where using the guidelines of my desk to just help me know where I want that wall to be. Okay. Do I want it to be there? Do I feel good with it there? I think I kind of want it lower, so I'm gonna move it down a little bit. I want it to be maybe here. Let's put it here instead. You guys will know what I mean when I get to the actual image, when I get to the actual coloring it, but I think I'm gonna put it here. I want it to kind of be behind her. And that's why we use this really, really light color because then we don't have to and we colored her last night. I posted it on YouTube, so um, you can watch a replay if you want. Because I wanted to give it, a, I wanted to give it like a little stone wall with a little bit of sky at the top. So, or trees or something. I don't know what, but something. So I'm going to just draw where my, so my wall is going to go between here and here. It's going to be a stone wall. So you guys can see what that looks like. I had a, I had obviously colored along the edge of my ruler and just picked up the black on here. So <laughs> she came out pretty good. I was pretty happy with how she came out. Um, so she looks, she looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is just to give myself a guideline, this is not what is going to look like bricks at first, but it's not going to be that way when we get done. So I'm just going to draw in some little stone areas. They're going to look square right now, but they won't when I get done. I don't really want to make them square. But I could do it brick, I guess, if I really, really wanted to. I have done a brick wall before, but that wouldn't be a challenge because I already know what I was doing. I don't, I haven't done the other one, so I thought I would try to do it in stone instead of brick, but they can do stone like this too, in the same pattern they do here in Texas. So generally when I'm building a wall like this, um, 
like a brick or a stone, you want to alternate where the bricks are. They don't all go in a row. So you can kind of see that. It's a little bit hard to see right now, but you'll see it as we're as we're going along. And my my designer wasn't that great, so these don't line up exactly, which is totally fine. You can do it however you want. There we go. That stone's a little long, but it's okay. Then we kind of already have this line in here this one that I drew before, but it's a mistake. So we're just gonna cover that up as we're going along and it will all be good. I promise it will. Cause this is just our guide. All that is, is our guide to the background. So we know what we're doing. Oh, I saw something on the screen, but it's actually you guys writing on what you guys wrote on the screen. I thought there was something on the paper. So silly me. Okay, so now the colors that I chose were a gray stone wall. So I chose T8, which is pretty dark, T6, T5, T3, and T2. Now, these are the tea colors, so they're a little bit different. I didn't want to do the gray or the white like I usually, I mean, the gray or the black, the C's or the W's, because I wanted to show you a little different. So we're going to use the T's tonight. And then we might throw in with that color, with those T's, I might throw in this um, E81 because it'll put just a different shade color to the brick stone uh, wall that I think will make it just pop a little bit more. I'm so glad you like her. She was super fun to color last night. And by the way, she looks like this. So I built all the ringlets in her hair when we did her last night. So this is her. And she is called, I hope it doesn't suck. <laughs> okay, so let's start building our wall. So I want this wall to, I want this stone to be really, um, maybe I won't, maybe I'll start with the second color and I'll go back in later and put the, shat, the real dark shadows with that T8. We'll start with T6. So I want them to go pretty, pretty good, but I don't want them to be perfect. They're stones, they're not bricks. They're gonna have cracks in them. They're gonna be a little bit more on the rounded side, sort of bumpy. I don't really know how to explain all that, but we're gonna have like, it's gonna be old stones. So they're gonna, I'm gonna start building in a little bit of these cracks starting right now. It's gonna look funny in the beginning, but just bear with me. Hi, Cindy. Just bear with me, we're gonna get there. They're gonna look like they were just thrown on top of um, each other. Putting a few cracks in there. See how I built that design so that I would know where to stop, where to start. I'm just gonna put some little accents in here for now, but we'll we'll blend those out and make those look a little bit more um, more more better, more better. I don't want these to be smooth lines because that's not generally what you get when you have you know stones cracked or gonna be kind of like she's sitting in a behind a stone wall so now we've done tile and now we're doing stone we have to do brick next and there's a little bit of a different technique when I'm doing the brick than what I'm doing right now so really these lines and cracks and stuff are just in there randomly they're not I have no method to that madness 
Some of them are gonna be straight, some of them are gonna be crooked. I'm gonna turn this again so I can keep going. Hello, hello, hello. So glad you guys are sticking it out with me for the duration of this video because it's gonna be really fun. It's a neat technique. I really like doing the stone. We don't wanna, we wanna, we're gonna have to fill in some of these areas like this where the stones meet up with that darkest color, but I didn't, uh, I didn't wanna start with that because you can go darker, but it's hard to go lighter without it looking funny. So I think I'm gonna build in all of these uh, stones and then I'll go back and put some little marks in them. And we did cobblestone once and so now we're doing just like these flat bed stones. I think we can get through them just a little bit faster if we, not that we have to do them fast, but just get them built in there so we feel comfortable with them. They look a little generic right now, but they'll be all right. It will be all right. It's all all right. Has anybody done this kind of a wall before? I know Jamie has. She's not here anymore, but I know she's done them before. I think a little bit. So just randomly putting them in there. They don't have to line up. They don't have any method to their madness. Just randomly putting them in there. Not you, not you. It's, it's, um, it's easier than it looks. It just is a little bit time consuming, but it's definitely easier than it looks. Although right now it looks pretty easy. <laughs> Not gonna lie. We'll have to be really careful when we go around her hair. But that's why I didn't pick the um, BV or the same color as her hair because I wanted it to look different. So we don't blend those together. All right, we've almost got our foundation going here. Okay, starting to build that wall. Hi, Melanie. So we're building a stone wall right now. Just putting some little marks in our stones because I need a few of the really dark ones and then we'll, we'll go from there. They're definitely random lines. I don't want them to all be straight because cracks in stone don't always go straight. So that's why some of them look a little crooked, a little weird, and we'll elaborate on that when we go in with the different colors. There'll even be a few spots in there. We want it to look very old timey-ish kind of wall that she's back in the, in the forest messing around. Trying to find her a dragon to play with gonna be her best friend, her spirit animal. This is sort of meditative. You guys are quiet. Have I medit have I put you guys in a trance? 
kind of scary doing a background like that, like a wall like this when you don't really know what you're doing, but. But hey, we already know I'm not afraid to try. I'll just try anything <laughs> once. If it works, great. If it doesn't, well, I won't do that again. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to use the back of this marker. I want to thicken up the bottom of this stone wall. So I'm kind of using the tip of that chisel side to really draw out that. I'm going to do this part in her hand with the other end. So it's more clear. Don't want to mess that up close to her hand. That wouldn't be good. You're just in awe. Yay! And you're hanging in there. Good job. Good job. Good job. Awesome. Okay. So I just wanted that to be a little bit thicker along the bottom. It doesn't have to be straight. Nothing in life is perfectly straight. So that's it with our T6. Now we're going to really start trying to build those um, stones out. So I'm going to go with um, T5 next. First thing I'm going to do is start building where they connect and the tops and bottoms of them need them to be a little bit thicker. I need them to be, I'll add a few more accents in there. This process won't be quite as hard, but we need those big spaces of that darkest between the bricks and stuff, or between the stones. You know, cause they had to use concrete to stick the stones together. So we need some, some thicker in there. We'll extend out on some of these and try to smooth some of these little thingies out. So I'm just going to go with what I feel like at the time. I want them to be a little bit more rounded than square, so I'm trying to build that part out to make them look like they're a little bit more on the rounded side of a stone instead of... Hi, Anna. How are you? What about the retreat? Did I miss that? I missed that comment. What did it say? Melanie Parsons. She has a bestie retreat. Come. Oh, I do. We do. We have an online retreat coming up. I know Anna, you should come, you should come check it out with your, with your bestie. We're doing a bestie retreat. It's coming up on July um, 9th and 10th. There's kit involved. So if you decide you want to do it, you might want to get it get get that going because we've mailed out all the already signed up members we mailed all that out today i say we lightly because jamie actually did it but um when is that it's next thursday and friday so today's thursday it's a, i mean next friday and saturday so it's a week from today um, the kits were mailed today, so you should get it. It's next weekend. There's going to be 3D projects and games and coloring and um, so much fun. And it's called the Bestie Retreat. You're going to get a stamp set. It, if you buy all the things, you'll get more stamp sets in your kit to use. Um, during the Besties Retreat, you'll get a bunch of other little surprises, things that we'll use during the the retreat so um and then we'll do scavenger hunts where we tell you what you're going to need for um the classes that we're going to have all day on friday i mean on oh uh, it is the ninth and 10th is that no it's i think it's i don't know maybe it is saturday and sunday where's my calendar let me look at my calendar real quick. I think you're right. It might be Saturday and Sunday. I can't remember. Let me look at my calendar. One sec, I'm almost there. Yes, Saturday and Sunday. I'm so sorry. I got confused for a brief moment. It is Saturday and Sunday, all day, usually about 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. 
Um, there's a special Facebook group that we set up um, for you to join in. We never shut it down, so you can always refer back to the in different instructions for the different projects and things like that. Um, you, if you can't attend all the classes all day, every day, um, Saturday and Sunday, they will remain as videos in the group and you can refer back to them. We leave it open for a week after the event for you to be able to join in in the contests. So don't think that if, you know, you have to run an errand or pick up a kid or whatever, that that's going to be any problem with you being able to enter in for the prizes. You're not. We love to give away prizes. We like to give you enough time to be able to complete the project. Sometimes if you do more than one, like if you go back and do another project with it, you know, you can get double the credit in the drawings. So definitely, does anybody have any questions about that? It is Saturday and Sunday. It's going to be so much fun. It's called the Bestie Retreat. My bestie is going to be here with me in Texas. So it's going to be live from Texas. So we're on Central Time, 9 a.m., 9 p.m. Central Time. Um, what else is there? So much fun. The scavenger hunts, those of you who are already in the group, the scavenger hunts will start before the retreat so you can have all your stuff ready. So um, early next week, I'll start posting the search for um, scavenger hunt items. Um, so you'll be ready by the time we get ready to do our, our retreat. You'll have all your stuff ready and prepared. But you won't quite know what the project's going to be until we get into it. So it's kind of a surprise. But don't worry, I got you back. I do the 3D, the 3D projects, some coloring. Jamie does the rest of the coloring. Tyler is going to do a project and... I believe coloring as well so you'll get to hang with Tyler as well and then it's me and Jamie doing the rest so us and Tyler are doing it this time it's gonna be so much fun I just love doing the online retreats I wish more people would join in in on them but we still have a great time we do bingo and we do games and we do trivia and then we give Good prizes is what the feedback we've been given. So we usually try to uh, give good prizes, prizes that fit you or uh, if we know you really well, something maybe you wanted or loved, you know, whatever rolls with it. So this is us just building out these stones. It takes a little while when you do a, a background like this, which is why I didn't do this part last night. I waited till tonight because we just couldn't get through it all last night. So we did the baby dragon earlier. Aww. You love our retreats. I know Cheryl's been to them, so she can definitely speak for, for how it goes. And who knows? If your bestie can't make it, you might get more besties while you're there. It helps you get to know the people in the group. You get to know Jamie and I a little better. We tell stories. Sometimes when we're playing bingo, we get kind of silly because we're sort of punch drunk by the end of the day. Um, but we have so much fun with it. You get to hear stories like, stand up, and um, Jamie's fear of seagulls, and <laughs> so it's pretty fun, but we'll be, we'll be uh, posting in there. There's already a, a post in there right now for you to say hi and everybody to get to know each other a little bit. All right, so we're getting somewhere on this stone wall. Going around her hair, but I don't wanna do, get too much in her 
I don't want to get any in her hair, actually. So I'm kind of building that wall around her hair. We do work really hard on those retreats. They're not, we try to keep them very price friendly so they're not three or four hundred dollars. Um, we try to keep them price friendly. You don't have to have a hotel to stay at, but you could stay at one, either you stay at your bestie's house or your bestie stays at yours. That's what we're doing. Jamie's coming here, so she'll be here staying in my house. Oh, Joanne, that's awesome. <laughs> you are gonna love it. You'll be so happy. We haven't, um, we, ha we, we just have really good feedback from our retreats. We had a limited number of seats, but we still have a few left. Only because we had a li limited number of some of the stuff that we put in your kits. So that's why we had to limit the number this time. But we still have a couple open slots. I think some people just don't know how good our retreats are, so we we have we're trying to get that word of mouth out so we can get more people there. Okay, this is starting to come together and we've only done two colors. We have a few more. All right. So there we go. I put it a little bit darker. Maybe you can tell down here, a little bit darker down here than up here because this will be more where the light is, even though it's gonna be kind of night, evening-ish time. Yep, your kit shipped today. Jamie worked hard to get all those kits shipped out because she'll be flying here in a week. So she's trying to get everything done. Also, a week after the retreat, we'll be in Georgia for the Scrapbook Expo in Georgia. That's our next show. We are going to be driving there from Texas to Georgia. I've driven it before, so I'm familiar with it. Okay, this is where you're going to start seeing it changing from solid... Um, from solid lines to more of a stony look. No, it is not too late to sign up. I'd sign up right away so Jamie can send out your kit tomorrow. We have all the kits um, stuff ready so we can add to it for those that wanna join in, it's not too late. We can still get it to you. And if you're anywhere close to me, you can pick it up too. We have somebody coming to pick theirs up. So any that any areas that I lighten up too much right here, I'll go back in with that darkest color that we skipped in the beginning. That's why we skipped it. So we could come back in with it later and blend it out. So you'll start seeing how this stone starts coming together when you get to the lighter colors. It'll kind of blend out these lines that I put in there so they don't look like lines. This is what I like about doing this. And now I'm coloring a little bit more on the side of the marker just to give more coverage. Not spending too much time sitting there, but they're starting to look a little more like stones. They're not quite bricks. Bricks would be different probably more square, more definite on how they're put in there. Unlike the stones that were just whatever shape the stone was, you just stack them to build the wall. I thought a stone wall would be a new thing for us to try. I've never done this before, but this is how I imagine it in my mind to work. So this is the stone wall in my head if that makes any kind of sense to you guys. This is my in my head stone wall. So I try to, when I decide what I'm gonna do, I try to envision it 
in my mind like what it would look like and then I tried to create that on paper with how I would do that, how I would make that look. Sometimes I look at pictures of different walls and stuff and that gives me like a base to think about in order to come up with that image in my head. So for, you wouldn't have guessed that I never done it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have never, this is not a wall I've ever done before. So it's just how I'm envisioning it to, to pan out for me. I'm pretty happy so far with how it's coming out. I, it's, it's, it's starting to look a little more stone-ish. Understanding how these markers work with each other is so helpful. So I knew that once I put the darkest tone in there, that when, if I went down on a lower number marker, so this is number three, if I went down on a low lower number marker from six to three, that it would wash out some of that dark because there's a lot more colorless blender in the creation of this marker color. So it starts pushing that other ink around, which gives you that stone-ish look. So once you start knowing how they behave together, it really helps you in getting texture of different types of um, walls and floors and that's kind of how it works. I did play around a little bit with a faded background earlier tonight, but decided I wasn't really sure how I wanted that to play out. So I decided not to try that yet tonight, but it will definitely be in a future video. And if you guys want to see how that worked out, I'll show you. So see, I wanted to do something like this. See how this um, inside part right here kind of looks like trees, yet bushes, a little bit of light, but then the tree branches are in there. So that was my practice and some of these little, you know, kind of br bristles and stuff like that was kind of what I was playing with tonight. You have a question. Your friend can't remember the name of the retreat I took with you guys. How do I found, find out? Let me see if I can touch that and it'll tell me the rest of the story. I can't. My phone is blocked, so I can't touch the see more, but I'll go and look for your comment after the, after the live so I can see. Um, what you're saying and answer you. How do you find out? I think you might be trying to say, how do you find out the previous retreats? I think we still have some of them in the shop because if people wanted to do the projects, um, they could still go in and learn from them. Um, but I'd have to know which project you were talking about to figure out which retreat it would be in it, but if you took the retreat, you can just go to the group called the name of that retreat because you still have access to it. I know you took them all, so I think, I think you have anyway. Um, yeah. You can still go in there and see them. I still see a lot of the spring break retreat stuff getting looked at. So people like that one. We did a, some really cool projects so far. I try to angle them towards things that, you know, people would use in everyday life. Yes, that's it. You're good. Okay. Not the last one, the one before. Um, we did, let me think about that for a second. I have them all written down, so I would have to look. So spring break was the last one. And then before that, I don't know, it's escaping me. I have to look it up, but I can answer that, I promise. I'll go out there and look after I finish this. 
We're still we're still doing good on time. These backgrounds just take longer to do. Okay, so I want this to be darker behind her head. So I'm not gonna leave any room for the last color right behind her head. Okay, there we go. Bricks are done a lot like this, but just a little more square and a little less of round look to them. And then there's a lot more, um, a lot more after the fact um, detail work that I do when I do bricks. I do have a picture of a commission piece that I did that had a lot of brickwork with graffiti on it, which was really fun to do. They wanted it to be like a, like a jazz kind of image with saxophone. They gave me the image they wanted me to use. Um, it had a saxophone and so I did a big brick wall that was bust broken open and um, had graffiti all over it because you know that's that's kind of how it is in like New Orleans and stuff is that graffiti wall. It was really fun and it came out really good. We could do a graffiti wall at some point if we want. I really like doing that. You can do whatever you want with a graffiti wall. We could even use a stencil for that. That would be super fun. Also on the weekend that we're gonna be in, I missed a spot right here, that we're gonna be in in uh, Georgia is release weekend. So, got all new stances to show you guys and then when we get back from the show, we can color them with you guys. So that'll be super fun. This girl was released a while back but she was um, out of stock for a while, but she's back in stock now. So if anybody was looking for her, they can, uh, they can now get her. She's back in stock and we ordered dyes for her. So if you got the stamp set when she was released the first time uh, and you don't have the dye, you can, you can get the dye now that goes with it. Back then, when we first released her, we didn't have any dyes. Um, we, we didn't sell dyes, so we didn't make any for her. Um, but now we do, so. Okay, so for this one, this is T2. So it's pretty light and it's gonna move the, the ink around. So I'm gonna use the chisel side to move this along a little bit faster because I don't wanna spend too much time sitting over that or it'll wash out all my stuff. So I'm just gonna kind of do that back and forth that we usually do when we do other stuff, but I don't wanna do too much over my marks because I wanna keep those, those marks in there. So see how that, that kind of brings it together a little bit? I wanna go over these lines because they're still a little bit dark. Okay, so here we go, doing the next one. And the next one. And the next one. You see how that works to blend that all out, make it look like stone? Oh, I, I understand completely. I hate when the phone rings and it says spam call, which I get about 15 a day. So it's gonna make me start not even looking at my phone when it rings if it doesn't quit happening. I don't know how to get off that list, whatever list I happen to get myself on. Because 15 spam calls a day is too many. 
right now I can't turn on that. You know you have that option to turn that on. Oh, I'm so glad you like it. You know how you have that option to turn it on on your phone where you can just block all spam calls? Well, it also blocks all doctor calls <laughs> because um, the doctors um, never call with their name. It's always like a nurse and she's using her cell phone or whatever. So if, and right now I have that going on. So I don't want to miss any of those calls. So I can, I had to turn it off and now the spam calls are coming in like crazy. Very annoying. All right. So we're almost, almost got this done. Then we're going to go in and put some dark, deep, dark, uh, areas in this. It looks like if you just look at it, you're like, oh, that looks really cool. But it's not done yet because it's missing that deep, that deep shadow to it. So we're going to hope this doesn't mess it up. We're going to put in some really deep, like where the where the cement-ish would be. And we'll blend this out a little bit with the next, with another color. I don't know which one yet, but. And notice how I'm not doing it like absolute, definite, you know, specific. Thank you. Um, it's It's still kind of a, not straight lines, just however they come together because it's stones and cement and you don't get perfect lines when you do that. So we're just, you know, there'll be a few little ones where I'm gonna accent some of the cracks I already have in there. Not a lot, but a few. So you see how that's starting to make it look like more 3D, you know, more dimensional and stuff. That's that's what we're going for. There's a little bit more definition in here instead of just an all smooth. And this one, I want to kind of show where the where this brick is, and this one. So just building in these different areas here. Sometimes you can do these uh, lines when you first start out and they'll still, you know, work out. But since I had never done this before, I wanted to wait until after to make sure that I didn't go too dark right at the beginning. So sometimes Sometimes we have to play with it. We'll wash it out a little bit more as we get going, but see, we needed that dark in there. I think we did. All right, it got quiet because I'm focused. <laughs> awesome. I'm liking this. Just want to put a few more of these little cracks in here. Not big ones, just little ones, kind of offset. So we'll uh, blend those out a little bit as we keep going. Okay, so now we put this in there. Oh, you got your nails done today? My nails match my wall. 
Yes, they do kind of, don't they? Okay, so I'm going to skip T6 and go to T5 just to blend this out because I don't want this to be like really defined, but I want it to really, I want it to stand out, but I want to put a little bit deeper shadowing in here. So we're going to do this and then we'll hit it one more time with the lightest color to make sure that we have a really good blend out on our colors and then we'll be done. So this is just kind of blending out that last color that I put in there because we want it to be darker but we don't want it to look like I just added some extra ink at the last minute. So. Looking better, it's looking better, it's coming along. All right, getting there. Hey, who's excited for the, who heard about the, the Sanderson sister movie coming out this time, this fall? I'm super excited. We watch Hocus Pocus every single year. We really like it. My daughter is a huge Halloween fan. Yay! I'm super excited for you too, Melanie. It's going to be so much fun. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you for purchasing the retreat. I can't wait to see you there. Jamie has the, uh, will invite you to the group as soon as she fills your um, order and ships out your, your kit. She's uh, the setup and then I do a lot of the scheduling and organization of the retreat and how things flow and all that kind of stuff, but she does the shipping out. <laughs> we split the responsibilities just a little bit. Your COVID mask for all three Sanderson sisters? That's awesome. My daughter just loves Halloween. She always goes all out for Halloween. And you know, with my husband doing cosplay, we like we like Halloween too. We like the dress up and stuff. Every year, my husband when we go trick or treating with Cooper or to a party before Halloween, maybe a you know like a city Halloween thing, my husband will go and wear his um, costume that he made for that year's convention. All right, I think I touched them all, so that's really good. I think it looks a lot better now. Now, for the last marker that I said we were gonna throw in there, it's gonna be this one. It's almost like a magic, like one of my super magic hero whatever, but I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna add this color to my stone wall. You see how that's going to change up the stone just a little bit? Not a lot, but just a little bit. Some of it I'm doing on the whole stone and some of it I'm just doing it in places on the stone so it doesn't look consistently covered in this color. But this will just change up the stone a little bit, make it look a little bit more like worn or um, old, dirty from being outside kind of thing. Just sort of changes it up from being just a gray stone wall to having a little bit of personality and life to it. You could use a brown color for this or a different color, but I like it with this one. It's kind of an ivory color is what it says, although it doesn't really appear ivory to me when I color with it, but I like it as being the final touch on this. You guys can let me know what you think. If you liked it better before or better after, your choice. You can tell me what you think. I don't mind. 
So that brightened it up a lot. I'm going to go one more time over the whole thing with the T2 to tone it down. Not spending much time on there. Two quick brushes over top of it just to tone down that color I just put in there because I don't want it to be too obvious. Now you could always start with darker colors and make this stone wall a darker wall, but I wanted mine to be more gray. So there you go. That's a stone wall. You like the finished look? It's pretty cool. It takes a lot of work, but it's pretty cool. Okay. So I'm gonna get some blue sky up here. So I need to pick some blue shades. I think I'm gonna go with, I don't want it to be really dark. So I think I'm going to go with, Ugh, get out of there. I think I'm going to go with the B9593. And then, let me see. I think I might want to throw in this color. Let's see how these match together. So this is B95. And B93. And this is B14. Oh yeah, that's much darker. Okay, so we want to start out with the B14. So it's really light blue. So B14, and this is the part that I'm gonna do up here. So I want this to be daytime. A pretty day. So we're just gonna get a little bit of that bright blue in there. I want to soften out those little things. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with B95. So this is kind of just putting that base foundation color on there that's bright blue, but the sky won't actually be that bright blue. I am using the chisel end because I think it's a little bit easier to use the chisel end. I am gonna go all the way across, but I'm not gonna fill in the whole thing the same color. So just a real light there in the center so I can put my lighter color in there. B93. Jack, you're going to have to go out in the living room if you're going to keep doing that. B93. Hi, Sharon. You got us a background going on here. So this one, the B93, is blending out the color. Now, it will make it lighter in the center because we didn't put as much ink there, which I'm totally fine with. That was kind of my intent, and I can always darken if I need to. Or lighten, whatever I feel like at the time. So it's almost like a little bit of a dusk type time. I wanted to get that in there right away because I may want to put um, some greenery on here. I'm not sure yet. And I need that to dry because it's really, really wet on the background, so. This is our girl. We gotta get some grass greenery going on here. So that's gonna be our next thing. And our sentiment will fit up there, I think. I know which one I wanna use, but I don't know if it'll fit. I may have to put it on the... Yep, it's gonna have to... Either I'm gonna have to mat it or something, or it's gonna have to go on this stone, but we'll see. All right, so for the grass, let's swatch this out. So I think I'm gonna go with the darker. So this is BG99. This one is BG96. I 
think I need to switch more to a green-ish color. Let's see what 85 looks like. Ooh, 85 is good. I like that one. And this is 82, so that might be really good. 82, and then we need another light color. I wonder if... I know I had that marker on my desk. Where did it go? Oh, here it is. This might be too bright. Yeah, too bright, too bright. Maybe, nope. Let's try, oh, 03 might be a good one. Ah, yes, perfect. Okay, so now we have our grass-ish color blend. So we have BG99. BG96, G85, G82, and then YG03. Those are the five colors that we're gonna use for the grass. So I'm gonna start with BG99. And I'm just gonna put some up here some of this really tall grass, like over the stone wall. So it won't really matter if I do any right here because our little dragon's gonna be flying in there. So, just gonna put some grass in here, like this. I don't wanna put it over her hair because she's sitting in front of it, not behind it. Hi, Terry. So, we're just kind of putting a little bit of grass that'll go over we're not going to do this all the way down like we have in the past but i just want to get a little bit of this here going on taller grass behind her but not what she's sitting on So maybe I'll start with, I'll go to the YG03 so I can get a base color on here. And I'll put this down here where she's sitting. This is kind of a base color, so it'll be covered up with darker color later. Just want to get her foundation going on. She doesn't have her shoes on, so we definitely don't want her sitting on the pavement. We want her sitting in the grass. Now when Jamie colored her, she colored her like in a yoga studio, which was really neat. You can probably find that on our YouTube channel. I do want to get some of this color up in here with this greenish color I just put in there. Going around her hair because I don't want to get green in her hair or on her dress or shirt or whatever you want to call it. Hello, hello. Thank you for popping in to check it out. So last night I posted a video where I colored this girl. And then tonight we colored a baby dragon that we're gonna put in the scene. And now we're creating a background to go with that. So those who are just popping in, that's what we're doing tonight. It won't take us too awful much longer. We're getting this background knocked out. The longest part of the background we already did, which was the wall, the stone wall. <laughs> yep. So we're going to get her. I do like this green with that yellow. Ooh, it's so pretty. But I am going to tone it down a bit. I'm not going to leave it that obnoxiously green. Stick around if you want to see how it, works, how it pans out. Because you never know what you see in mid-process isn't necessarily what it ends up looking like when you get done. 
so that's my base foundation of the grass. <laughs> okay, and then I'm going to go back to the 96. I did 99 for back here, and now I'm going to add in a little bit of the 96. It's going to be a little bit lighter. I'm just going to put a few in here. I want this to be a little bit more uh, filled up with these tall strands of grass, and then they'll get shorter as we go and a little bit different. I think I'm gonna to try to do them a little bit different. So you see a lot of little grass here. It's getting not so thick. Just a little bit of grass going on here. Not Don't do them all in the same direction or the same type, otherwise it starts looking like a pattern and not grass. I think I'll come down one more row. So you got to do them a little bit randomly. <laughs> then we're going to go with <clears throat> G85 is our next color. We're also going to fill in some here. This one's going to be a little bit more green and a little less um, of the blue green shade that we had going on and get a little bit more in here. I don't want to do it over her arm because I really want that grass behind her. Normally I wouldn't care if it crossed over her arm if the grass was going to be in front of her, but it's not. I want that taller grass behind her. I guess I could have made them bushes, but. Oh well. Okay, so I wanna come in a little bit more with a different color, so maybe a little bit around the edges here. So we're gonna start deepening this grass that's just our base coat so we can leave some empty spaces so the grass is different colors, different shades. I'm going to go back with my BG96 real quick and I'm going to put a little bit of a shadow area under her legs. She's shadowing on the grass where she's sitting. Need to get a little bit of that color going on there. And then we're probably going to want a little bit of a baby dragon kind of shadow here. So I'm just going to put him in just a little bit right there. Not real detailed and we'll blend it out. But we're going to put him there so we need to have him a little bit shadowed out of there too. So blending this out with G85 a little bit. Make this shadow area blend. Looks like a mess right now. Please don't freak out. I'm not done. I'm going to keep going. We're going to be lightening, light, lightening this up a little bit. We have a bunch of scattered because some of the grass is going to be um, darker than others. I want patches of dark, patches of light. But this never has to be exactly as long as you have a spot there that looks like a shadow of the color of the dragon, you're good. Doesn't have to be specific, but it will definitely show. Let me just give you an idea of what that will look like. It'll look like he has a shadow down below him, if that makes any sense. Okay, G82 is next. This one is much lighter. So this is where I'm gonna start smoothing out these areas here that we were putting in. Kinda 
kind of smooth out from the shadow area. I don't want to wash it all out, but I do want it to be a little bit lighter. Get that blended out a little bit. So we have that really light base color in there, so that's pretty helpful for the background to have that really bright green in there as well. Can I move the paper? Is that better? Should I, should I zoom it out just a little bit more so you can really see it? All of it while I'm working on it? How about that? Is that better? Okay, so I'm starting to put it in a little bit here. Kind of get that color deepened a little bit. This part right here where the dragon is going to be coming in. Okay, so we're getting there. Oh no, it might be stuck because I'm not even coloring at the br at the brief moment right now. You won't miss much if you close it out and restart it. This is YGO3. It's the lighter color. I'm just gonna come in here and try to blend out these colors a little bit better so we have more smooth, but I'm also gonna leave patches. I mean, I want us to be able to see this green back here, the grass, but I really wanna lighten up some of this. So it's gonna kinda look like a, oh, there you go. Um. It's going to kind of look like a little bit of um, patchy grass. So you'll still be able to see some of those grass lines, but not really definite. That is my goal and my plan, so no worries. Since the, this green looks significantly darker, I may bring in that YG21 after all and uh, just lighten up some of that color. That YG21 looked really, really bright, but I think now that we're putting it around here, what it's gonna do is a little bit of washing out in some of the areas on here, which is kind of what I wanted. So it looks like she's sitting in the grass, but not blades of grass, if that makes sense. I'll hold it up closer in a few minutes because it looks way different than what I'm seeing on my TV. I wanna lighten up these areas just a little bit so you can definitely see the shadow under her body. You see that? And then we also wanna make sure that we see this shadow. It's not gonna be real clear, it doesn't have to be really identified, but we definitely want it to have a little bit of a shape to it for the dragon. It's gonna be up there that is not there right currently, but it will be. So, yeah, I kinda of have a spot there. Okay, this is our YG21. One more time to smooth out any of that. I'm gonna do a little bit more of this YG21 just to get some color in there. Super duper awesome. Okay, so we do have, so if I put this little baby dragon here, you'll see the the body and the tail in the shadow. That was my intent to do that, to show that. 
So I really, really like that. I also want to um, put some, a little bit more greenery to cover over the, over the wall. So it looks like there's a little bit of greenery on the wall. So I'm going to use G85. And I'm just going to put like some branches coming out here with these where I'm just gonna do it like this, like all these little, one in the middle, and then I'm gonna come up on this side. This is just gonna kinda put a little greenery covering where it's just coming out of the, from around the wall. because I want it to look like there's some different trees and branches and other stuff. No, no actual trees, but definitely some of these big long ferns coming around here. And so you just make a line with it and then you start from the bottom and you just make these angles and you have to just, you have to keep doing it over and over and over again. It's okay if you go over because you have to do this side as well. So. Like that. These will be behind the dragon. So you'll just see them sticking out. Maybe we'll do one coming this way too. But she's got like all kinds of greenery going on around her. Since we didn't really put her in the forest, at least we have some tall grass going on. I'm going to do this one kind of coming from here. This one's hanging from a tree. I guess I could have done it the other way. That doesn't really matter. Almost looks like a pine tree hanging over here. We should do one more. Just a little bit of a different way to do a tree than just the regular kind of stuff you do. So isn't that neat? It puts a little bit of greenery around the, around the place. I'm gonna actually go back with this YG03 kind of over these areas where I put these so I can get just a little bit brighter color so they stand out a little bit more. Kind of get that two-tone going on. What do you think so far? Like, notice I didn't do the center piece with these brush strokes because I wanna leave that one just the green color, the dark green color. And this is why I didn't wanna do my, um, my stone wall too dark because I wanted to be able to go over it with my I'm not going to do these branches up here with this light color. I'm going to do them with the G82 because it has less of the yellow in it than the YG03. So it'll it'll look like a different type of tree that's hanging over here. A different type of branch or tree hanging over versus the ones that are coming out of the ground. So there we go. I've left this open space because that's where we're going to put the sentiment, which we're about to do. It is a lot of work, but it's not too bad. Oops, I meant, see, I hate this new, uh, I mean, this um, camera thing. It's so much lower than my other camera was 
but I'll have the new one soon and you guys won't have to be tortured by that. Okay, so what we're going to do is we need to go back to our baby dragon and we need to put his little eyes in there. So I'll zoom it in real quick so you can see. So this is just the Pear Blossom Press White Gel Pen. Watch how much of a difference this makes. <laughs> Isn't that just the cutest? It looks so much better now that his little eyes are done. I'm super excited about that. I am going to do a wobbler. How did you know? Ding, 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 ding. Bonus. I am going to do a sweet spring on that little baby dragon. So before I do that, I need to zoom back out because I'm going to stamp the sentiment on there because of, I already chose which one I wanted to do. So here's my Misty. We're almost done now. We'll just have to put it on a card and we'll be all done. Okay, so I chose May You Touch Dragons, Dance with Fairies, and Talk to the Moon because it's, um, she's gonna be touching a dragon. So I thought it was perfect to do that. So I did pull out my Y000 that I forgot to do up here. I wanted to put a little bit of sunlight coming through here. So I was just gonna put a little bit of yellow in here. Not a lot, but just a little bit to kind of make it look like it's sunny outside. It might have been too light of a yellow, so I'm gonna have to go back in with my B1 and smooth it out. But I wanted a little bit of yellow color in there just because I wanted it to look like the sun was there. Nice, that's better. Okay, that's what I wanted. Perfect. All right, so this is gonna be my sentiment. I'm thinking I might actually want to put that on a piece of paper. Since it's covering the stone wall, it might not come out quite as good as I thought. So let's put that on a different piece of paper. Oh my gosh, these magnets are driving me crazy. I have some small pieces of paper, so this will be really simple. The sweets, I always save all my sweet sentiment scraps for this purpose, exactly. This is the one I want to do. Should be pretty easy. I have my momentum memento right here so I can stamp it. Usually I stamp right on the background, but that's probably a little braver than most people are, but use my espresso to press it down. Ta-da! May you touch dragons dance with fairies and talk to the moon. Okay, so I'll clean this up afterwards since we're almost done. And I'm gonna trim this down. Just, I don't really have it measured out. I'm just trimming it down so. So it fits on the card perfectly. I'm eyeballing it. Who's all for eyeballing it? <laughs> Oops, it wobbled. Perfect wobble question at the wobble time. There we go. This side is a little bit longer than the other. Now we're good. Perfect. All right, here we go. 
Oh, we should have measured that too, because I think this background might be a little bigger than for a card. So let's measure it up. Here we go. Ooh, no, it's good. We just need to trim just a little bit, a smidge off of there, and maybe a smidge off of here. And a smidge off of here, because I really want it to be about that high. There we go. Okay, so just a little bit off of each edge. Now it'll be ready to put perfectly right on a card. What do you think, blue? A blue background? I mean, a blue card base? I think blue would be good. But we'll see. I have a, how about this one? Ta-da! Perfect. Better than dark blue? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to whip this together and we'll be all done. And I'll show you. Like, I like that on there. But I think I'm going to round the corners real quick. Well, I had it right here on my desk. The corner rounder. You know how you lose something on your desk when you just had it? You're like, how can I possibly lose it when I just had it? All right, so I don't know what happened to it. I have two other ones on my desk. So since I can't find it, we'll use this one. So I have this one that does that design on it. Ta-da! Well, that worked out good. I didn't even cut my word off. Look at that. Perfecto. Now it fits in there a little bit better. I like it better. Um, I think what I'm going to do is put blue around the outside, around the outside. I think I should do BG72. So I'm going to show you how I do that. I take the sketch side of my marker and I just go around the outside of the image and that puts the color on there. It's kind of the same idea as what we do with um, ink pads, but in this case, it'll match the Copic colors I used in the set. So I tend to do it like this instead. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done. And I do this a lot with my black um, pen Nice. What do you think? I think it's, I think it looks good. I like it. All right, here we go. We're going to fold our card base. I always have card bases pre-made, so isn't that amazing? Because then you didn't have to wait for me to cut all that stuff up. Wasn't that perfect? I use my espresso to do the fold. It works perfectly. I already have my inside card labeler already ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that inside of my card. So here's my glue. You do, you have them all ready. I always have all of them. I have like, I just go through my stash of, um, of Stampin' Up! paper and I just pull two of every color that I have, and I have all of them, so two of every color, and then I cut card bases with them, and then I, that way I always have whatever color I need at the time. And it works out perfectly. It makes it easy to make a quick and easy card. It works great. I love it. I'm gonna zoom out just a tad, a tad bit more so you can see a little bit better of my messy desk. I am gonna go ahead and put this on here. I think the blue looks great. I really like it. I think the blue is great. Okay, so I'm gonna put glue on this, get it all on here. If I can keep the glue on the paper, I'm 
gonna eyeball it and get it on here straight, hopefully. Okay, in order to make it lay flat, I turn it over, rub it with my espresso on both sides, top and bottom. Flip it back over. I did put it on there correctly. Yay! Since we're gonna wobble the dragon, we're not going to do that with the sentiment. We're just gonna glue it and put it on here. Let's see, right here. I think that's good. Looks straight to me. If it's not, oh well, it's handmade. Then we have our wobble. So I always put wobbles on backwards, but I'm gonna try very hard not to do that today. So I'm going to take we have these in the shop. If you like them, you can get them. So you pull the paper off of the side that has the hole in the center, right here. And this gets attached to the baby dragon. And I'm gonna try to put them where you can't really see it. It kinda fits in there. I'm gonna press it in there. I wanna make sure it's on there really good. And then I'm gonna peel off the back. And this is one full piece of clear on there. So the flat clear goes on the card. All right, so where do we want him? I think right here. We're gonna press them down. I'm gonna use the back of my tweezers to make sure that all the plastic is on there very good. So we don't have any issues with that. Press them down and then, oh, he works so good. How cute is that? And that's how you mix your stamp sets together. I am going to do, uh, I was going to do, I'm going to do some gemstones real quick because if you guys know me, I don't like to go without bling. So I have this little book here with my bling in it. Oh, here we go. I'll just use this one. So Gina Marie blings. I think it needs a little bling and then it's done. And then I stamp the back and we are finito. So I think I'm going to use the yellow. I want to put them in these little corners of the sentiment. I hope it's gonna work because that other one, the May is too close. So maybe I'll just put them on the bottom too. Let's see, where do we wanna put the other one? Maybe we'll put one, maybe we'll put them out here too. Mm, I don't know, what do you think? One, two, we need one more. You touch and dance with fairies. Maybe we'll put it on the eye. Maybe I'll just stick it. Sometimes just stick it. Well, we're gonna need another one then because it looks off. I like everything to look centered, balanced out. I don't know. What do you think? Shall we stop? With three? can't. I can't help myself. There we go. 
there we go. Now we have, look how cute that is. Oh my gosh, that came out really, I'm really happy with how that came out. I like the greenery on the wall too. I'm super happy that I just thought about doing that. <laughs> okay, one more step and we're done. You gotta stamp the back. Always sign your work. It's your work. Plus people like to get it when you signed it. Three or five, no more. I got five. There we go. Looky, looky, all done. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know it was a little bit of a long process for um, the background, but well worth it. I like it a lot. And look at the shadow where he is. It's so cute. Super duper fun. I hope you guys love that. I will, um, I will not, today is my last day for the week. Jamie is going to do tomorrow night, so you guys will see Jamie tomorrow night, and you'll see me next week, but not on 4th of July, because I'll be watching fireworks. Hee <laughs> hee. I'm so glad you guys like it. I'll see you guys next time, next week, Tuesday, 930. Good night.